So I've had the Canon M50 Mark II on loan for a couple of weeks now, and after testing a lot of things with it, let me tell you whether or not you should get one in 2023. Because maybe you should. Or maybe you shouldn't. Let's hop in. So let me start off with a basic spec dump, and then we'll get into how all the pieces make a whole. Now, the camera itself is on loan from my workplace, and this video is not sponsored by Canon, so rest assured, all opinions are 100% my own. Now, the Canon M50 Mark II has a 24.1 megapixel CMOS APS-C sensor. Now, something already there that you want to keep in mind is the fact that since it's a Canon APS-C, that means that there is a 1.6x crop instead of the 1.5x that you can with other brands like Sony. Now with video, the M50 Mark II can do full HD at 24, 30 or 60 FPS. It can do 720p at 60 or 120 FPS, or it can do 4K at 24 FPS. In terms of port selection, there is a mic part on the left side, there is a micro USB and a mini HDMI port on the right side. On the top part of the body, there is a 2.36 million dot EVF. On top of that, there's a hot shoe mount and a built-in flash, which you really shouldn't use. It has a fully articulating touchscreen and a plethora of buttons, many of which can actually be reassigned to some extent, which is nice a small connectivity button on the lower right side of the body. On the bottom you have your battery slash SD card compartment. The battery is the LPE12, which Canon says will give you around 905 shots with the EVF or 95 minutes of 4K recording. The M50 Mark II uses Canon's EFM mount, which is probably one of the camera's downsides, but we'll get into that. And that is the spec dump portion done. Now let's actually see how all of those features fare. For photos, the M50 Mark II is a perfectly fine shooter, as long as you're not trying to do sports or wildlife photography with it. The 24.1 megapixel sensor produces good images provided you have decent enough lighting, since you don't really want to push the camera above 3200 or maybe even 1600 ISO. Now those use case limitations come from the fact that the burst mode on the camera is limited to 10 FPS and the buffer size is very, very small, around nine or 10 images. And the autofocus is not really the fastest out there. In terms of video, the video quality that comes out of the M50 Mark II is pretty good with a couple of major caveats. Now, while in 1080p, you have the use of Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which works really well. But if you want to up the resolution to 4K, like the cameras advertised to do, you're going to get hit with a lot of downsides. First of all, you get an additional 1.5 times crop. Keep in mind that is already on top of the 1.6 times crop from the fact that it's an APS-C camera compared to a full frame. So with that in mind, it is now a 2.4 times crop. Now that is a massive crop. This thing alone will drop the camera's usability in something like vlogging because you're gonna need a really wide lens to be able to hold it at an arm's length and still see what you usually wanna see. Now on top of that crop, once you switch over to 4K, the camera drops the dual pixel autofocus and only relies on the contrast detection autofocus, which is useless, to be honest. It is all over the place, it does what it wants, it can be relied on for anything. Now if you still think that vlogging is possible in 4K, well, the kit lens does have stabilization, but keep in mind, that's adding an even further crop on top of the massive crop that you already have. So you're basically vlogging with a 50 mil right now. So no, the 4K in this camera is pretty much a non-starter unless you have a subject that stays completely still and the camera is sitting on a tripod. At that point, what are you shooting? 
but most of these problems are not there in the 1080p mode. And that is why the M50 should probably be considered a 1080p camera. And as a 1080p camera, it works really well. The footage is pretty good. It's a bit too soft for my taste. My initial reaction was that it's just out of focus, but it was showing me in focus the whole time. So I don't really know what that's, that's about, but this is a matter of taste. If you like that kind of footage, then you're gonna like it. If you don't, then you don't. Also shooting video at 1080p with the stabilization at max will give you some really nice smooth footage. The stabilization works well. And if you throw on some additional stabilization in post, you're gonna get some really nice smooth footage. Now the real potential pain with any resolution is the fact that the camera has a 30 minute record limit. So if you wanna record a podcast or something more long form, you're going to have to be resetting the camera every 30 minutes. Now, while 1080p will give you that 60 FPS, if you wanna go further, like I said, you can. The 720p resolution will offer you 120 FPS, but it is 720p. And in this day and age, that resolution is really starting to show its age. Now, the screen is fully articulating and it is a full on touch screen. So you can use touch control for focusing or changing the settings or navigating through the menus, which makes using the screen itself an absolute joy. Now with the mini HDMI port on the right, you can plug the camera into a recorder or a capture card if you want, and it works really well. You can get a clean HDMI out from the Mark II that you couldn't get with the original M50. But once again, you wanna use that 1080p option because, well, for the same reasons mentioned above. Now the micro USB port right next to the HDMI port is for data only. So you cannot use it for charging, even when the camera is off. So only plugging it into your computer, I guess, and transferring files. So if you wanna use the M50 Mark II as something like a streaming camera, you are stuck with just getting a dummy battery of some sort. Now, speaking of the battery itself, the M50 Mark II, like I said, uses the LPE12 battery. And Canon says that it can do 305 shots using the live view function or 95 minutes of 4K recording or an hour and 35 minutes of 1080p recording. But you do need to restart that recording every 30 minutes. Now, according to my test, those numbers are relatively accurate. So let's go with that. Now the kit lens that comes with the M50 Mark II is a 15 to 45 millimeter F3.5 to 6.3. It is a lens that will get you started, but I do recommend that you start eyeing your lens upgrade as soon as you get the camera, because it's not terribly sharp. The stabilization is okay, but it's just something that I would upgrade from pretty quickly. Now, like I said before, the M50 Mark II uses the AF-M mount, which is for all sorts and purposes discontinued. Not officially, but it is really, isn't it? Now for that purpose, you probably want to get a mount adapter as soon as you would get the camera, so you can use EF lenses on it because you'll actually be able to use those lenses in a potential next Canon body that you get. But then again, since Canon is really going hard on the RF mount, it's not looking that great for the EFM mount whatsoever, even with an adapter. It has great lenses now, but you know, it is kind of going out. So with all of that in mind, who would I say should consider getting the M50 Mark II? And well, to be honest, I can't really recommend anyone getting this camera anymore. I mean, it's not because the M50 Mark II would be a bad camera. If you already have it, that's great. And it is a good camera, but getting it now is just, it doesn't make sense considering the competition. What the biggest competitor probably being the Sony's ZV-E10, which will give you uncropped 4K, which is oversampled from 6K, 
much better stabilization, not even mentioning Catalyst Brows, much better microphones, 1080p's, 120 FPS, and all the while utilizing Sony's E-mount system and the lens selection that comes with that. So getting this over that just doesn't make sense to me. And if you really want that EVF, which isn't on the ZV-E10, then I would just save up a bit more and get the R10, since that will give you a better camera in pretty much every single way, and it's not even that much bigger. Plus, it has the actually relevant RF mount, so your lens selection will be good for the whole foreseeable future. And any lens you get, you will surely be able to use in your next camera. And that's pretty much everything I have to say about the M50 Mark II. It is a great camera if you already own it, but I just wouldn't recommend buying into it anymore. All right, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, remember to consider leaving a like on it and let me know in the comments below what you think of the M50 Mark II. And with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye.